Weather. Isn't it a pain getting weather synchronised across simulators? Such a nuisance. One of the flying groups that I have contact with was setting up a group flight and they wanted these weather conditions. In the other simulators that's fairly straightforward, but in Microsoft, not so much. But we figured out how we can have a reasonable stab at it. So let's open up the weather settings. and let's choose something that's fairly similar to what we want. So I'm going to choose scattered clouds. Then we can start modifying it to what we want. So from this point on do not change anything in that drop-down menu. Let's set the wind first of all. This icon is the wind layer at the moment there's just one wind layer and that seems to apply to all altitudes. If you want to have different wind layers, so for one at surface level and then one for winds aloft, you can set it like so. I'm going to delete that layer because we only want one wind setting for the moment. So click on that and this is the little wind compass here. So we want wind from 230 that's down here somewhere at 10 knots that'll do. Gusting 15 so I'm assuming that we want 150 percent in here because that means that the gusts are up to 15 if we take that as 100%. Set the same kind of direction, maybe something slightly different just to keep people on their toes a bit. No, maybe not. Maybe we should stick, stick to the prescribed direction. Ooh, that'll do. And then the clouds. So let's click on so by default we're given three cloud layers but the groups only asked for two so we're going to move this one right up out of the way turn the coverage down to zero so it's basically nothing I don't think it's possible to delete the cloud layer the first cloud layer here we want is four eighths cumulus from 4,000 to 7,000 feet. So you can either move the slider here or you can grab the line or you can even type in here though it's a little bit fiddly. So 4,000 to 7,000 Now 4 eighths cumulus, so we want coverage of about 50%. And the scatter seems to affect how thick the clouds are. So let's get out the aircraft so we can look up in the air. Let's not look up into the sun. There we are. So as we change the scatter Oh, hang on. Let's just get rid of that other cloud layer for the time being. So we can see what we're doing. Uh, you'll see that it's changed the thickness of the layer. It seems to do this. If you ask it to produce thick clouds, it can't do it in a thin layer, which is fair enough. So the scatter changes so we've got thin tufts there gets thicker and thicker more cumulus and then don't really know what it does maybe it's just changing the position but it just seems to make it less as you increase the scatter so I think that that looks quite nice for cumulus and we'll try yeah 
because we've made the layer thin, we've lost the density in the clouds there. But I don't want to change the altitude there because if the group is flying above the clouds, they want to know what level the tops are. Then we've also been asked for 2 eighths cirrus higher up. So from 27,000 to 28,000. And that's quite a thin layer, so it might not be happy with that. And the coverage, I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. Let's move it. So you can just sort of see them coming in there in the gap. I'm going to turn the coverage up more. So that is way more than the two eighths we were asked for. But it's quite difficult to see. Let's get into a better camera. Okay, so you could see that layer coming and going. So I'm going to just put a small amount of that. Okay, I think that's probably okay. They've also asked for a temperature of 5 degrees, so go into settings and this is going to be the temperature at sea level. Yeah. And the ISA has gone to minus 10, that means we are 10 degrees below the ISA standard temperature of 15 degrees at sea level. So don't worry about that setting, just change that one. And they want Q and H to be 1005. There we are. They've asked for visibility of 30 miles. So let's get up in the air a bit so we can see. Got fantastic visibility at the moment. So visibility is affected by aerosol density here. So let's turn that up. As you turn it up more and more and more, you see it gets more and more hazy and you lose visibility. Now 30 miles is pretty clear really. I'm going to guess at about that. It's hard to tell, isn't it? And when you're looking into the sun, those aerosols really become more noticeable. So I think that's probably about right. I would like to just look at the upper clouds though. So what I'm going to do is just move my position right up above the first layer. Um, could just take off and have a look at it of course but I'm just going to do this for the purposes of demonstration so I'll just pause the video so just pretend that I've taken off and climbed up here actually I've just used a bit of software that shifts my position so I'm now above the lower cloud layer which does look about 50% I guess but the upper layer is not very visible at all so I think I'm just going to make that slightly uh, where were we cloud settings just going to make that uh, slightly more coverage yeah and I suspect it's because the layer is so thin we're not really seeing it if we were to make that layer thicker see how it comes in so maybe just have a little bit more thickness and then we can turn down the coverage a bit now it looks a bit more natural doesn't it good yeah I think that looks all right okay so this is a bit of a faff you don't want to do it 
every time you set up the plane, but you can save this. You can save it as a preset. This little button here has got what looks like two floppy disks, if you remember what a floppy disk is. Click on that. Would you like to save a new preset name? Yes, I would. My Club Flight. Save. And now it appears in the list of your drop down menu. So let's just change the weather quickly to something else. And then to go back to your conditions. There we are. So you've got the correct wind still, you've got your correct cloud layers, correct Q and H, correct temperature at sea level. Now the simulator stores that uh, configuration file in a place where you can get at it so you could actually then distribute that to your friends that you want to fly with and it puts it inside the root of the simulator folder. So I've got a shortcut here to my microsoft.flightsimulator underscore 8week that long folder. If you don't know where that is, um, if you ask a well-known search engine it will list the possible locations depending on uh, how you installed the simulator. Once you've found that folder, inside it is local state and then weather and then presets. For once, Asobo have given us a sensible file path to something. Here we are. There's that file that we made, My Club Flight. You could attach that to an email, you could upload it somewhere and provide a link, your friends could download it and then they just need to pop that file in their presets folder, do it when the simulator's closed or if they do it when it's open they have to reboot the simulator and then they will see that um, weather preset in their drop down menu as well. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.